getting attacking width and wall back, full backs forward. So it's encouraging that Micon's back. But again, I think yeah, this is maybe one of the reasons why we've seen Bastos as well, because he's played full back there as, as well. So he might, might be seeing a bit of a dub, double full back. I, the, I think the key for me is Javinho up front for Roma. If, if Roma can use his pace you know, against Albion and, and Fernandez behind that, that, back, that back four from Napoli, then. And if he's clinical enough to, to, to convert those chances, which we know that is his problem, you know, he, he often creates a lot, but the, the finish is not always as, as good as the, the, the creation. I just think psychologically it's, it's well set up for Roma because they are under no real pressure to no. get a result here, whereas Napoli have to go for it. It's probably their last chance, as you said, I think, James, in, in the intro to, to make up that ground. And we know that Roma can do one thing very well, which is to play on the counter-attack. Mm. So I, I don't think they'll get beaten tonight. Well, that was exactly the story in the first game, which they won 2-0 back in Rome. Uh, Pjanic and co getting all sorts of space in between, uh, behind uh, Napoli's forwards and, and midfield as they, as they came on. You saw the uh, players there. One or two tense faces among the uh, Roma players by looks of it, but they are six points ahead with a game in hand, so it's a massive advantage that they have. Very good, a terrific atmosphere in store. Hopefully a terrific game as well. Let's enjoy it now in the company of our commentators. They are Stuart Robson and, first of all, Derek Ray. Thank you very much, James. Good evening, everyone. So, the Derby del Sole, the Derby of the Sun, and that yellow thing in the sky has been shining brightly on Napoli and Roma for most of the campaign. If Napoli have designs on finishing ahead of Roma in the table, they can't contemplate anything other than a win tonight. Second place is important, remember, as it carries with it an automatic place in the UEFA Champions League group stage. They've met three times already in the league and cup this season, with home advantage proving decisive on each occasion. Napoli trying to play catch-up. Gonzalo Higuain is back from suspension and will lead the line for the Vesuviani. Rafa Benitez, the man at the Napoli helm, always wants to do things his way. You can't really argue with most aspects of Napoli's season. And let's not forget, still the possibility of lifting two trophies. Rudy Garcia, the Frenchman in charge of Roma. And he's succeeded in putting his stamp on the side. Let's have a quick look at the Napoli team. As I mentioned, Gonzalo Higuain is back from suspension, so is Raul Albiol. There's a place for Blerim Gemayli in midfield. That from last week, Gobritos, Pandev and Jorginho, who is ill. The big talking point for Roma is that top scorer Mattia Destro starts on the bench. There's a first start for Michel Bastos. Daniele De Rossi begins a three-match ban for punching Mauro Icardi in last week's 0-0 draw with Inter. The two captains together, both wearing number 17, Marek Hamzik of Napoli and Mehdi Benatia of Roma. And he's not camera shy, is he, Rafa Benitez? Not afraid of the spotlight, just greeting Rudy Garcia there. Gianluca Rocchi from Florence is in charge of this high-profile fixture. He was also the man in the middle for Napoli's recent 3-0 win in the second leg of the Coppa Italia semi-final against Roma. Stuart, let me say good evening to you. What do you think will be important tonight in this game? Well, it's, the important thing is when Napoli are attacking, they've got to be aware of the counter-attack. That's why Jovino's playing up front rather than Destro. That's why Bastos is coming to the team. That's why Florenzi's playing as well, because they want to catch Napoli out on the counter-attack. And the guys in the studio are exactly right about Roma. Their fullbacks have to defend as well as they attack. We don't know too much about Romagnoli. He's done okay so far. But Maicon, when he's in 1v1 situations, you think that Mertens or Callahan will be able to get at him. It's a pleasant night for football. It was a cracker of a day. Aurelio De Laurentiis, the president of Napoli, looking on from the Tribune of Honour. It was an atmospheric venue this, even though the fans are some distance from the field of play, with the running track, part of the story at the San Paolo. So just 25 days on from killing off Roma's cup dreams, 
Napoli must try to close the gap between their second place, Gianno Rossi, and themselves. Parsimony has been the watchword for the capital outfit. Three clean sheets since crashing out of the Coppa Italia. One goal conceded in the last seven Serie A matches. Well, in the absence of Totti, there's the player that's going to make things happen. Pjanic. We saw those stats that James put up before the game. Without Totti, they're nowhere near as effective, nowhere near as creative. But Pjanic is the player that can make things happen. A wonderful passer of the ball. Mira then Pjanic, who is fit again. He's looking forward to going to the World Cup finals with Bosnia Herzegovina. Leandro Castan for Roma as they play keep ball in the opening minute of this contest. On the way back to Morgan De Sanctis, the former Napoli goalkeeper. Left the club last summer, Benatia for Roma. Trying to make the connection with Michel Bastos in the starting 11 for the first time as a Roma player. He's on loan from Al Ain of the United Arab Emirates. Roma will have an option to make him their player this summer. Christian Maggio with the Napoli throw. Michel Bastos trying to find Gervinho, who, as expected, Stewart is operating through the middle. Yeah, that's right. And Bastos out on the left hand side, Florenzi on the right. They're not the sort of balls that Higuain wants. He's clever with his back to goal. He likes balls played down the side of defenders, but not from too far away. He's not going to have too much chance to close the ball down. He's playing up front by himself. Hamshit will go and join him when. Back players have got the ball for Roma. There's Castan. John Nine Golan was sitting in front of the defence. Mike Horn, still a marauder as right backs go, even at the age of 32. A little bit slack by Napoli and Giovinho. And appeals for offside. There was no flag. Well, that's a run. He's saying somebody should have told him there that he was onside. And he certainly was. Good decision by the assistant referee. Lovely little ball played over the top. I think he feels as though the goalkeeper's coming to clatter him there. So instead of bringing it under control, he tries to just flick it on. A bit of hesitancy from Roma. Venatia and Castan together, but De Sanctis was alert. And Inler was up against Nainggolan. Settled in well. With Roma, Raja Nainggolan, a Belgian international, actually scored for Belgium the other night against Ivory Coast in the 2 2 draw. No free kick forthcoming. And away goes Marek Hamzic as Napoli try to get into a rhythm. Jose Callejon wanted it back from Marek Hamzic. Tidied up by Benatia. Jamaili and Inler, the two Swiss players in alliance in the centre of midfield for Napoli. Castan put to work again. Christian Maggio thrives on getting forward on that right hand side. It could be a big test for Romagnoli. Rudy Garcia putting his faith in the youngster at left back. Well, it will be a test if Maggio gets up to the far post when crosses come from the other side because Maggio's really good in the air. I don't think he's so effective when he plays as a normal right back. The system, obviously, that Benitez prefers, the back four, when he's a wing back, as he may be for Italy in the World Cup at times, he can really get forward and cause problems. First corner, and I'll tell you what, set pieces were oh so important. When last the sides met in the Coppa Italia. Napoli were devastating that night. And it's Callejon with the outswinger. Won't get it back here. No. Disappointing. Really disappointing pass in the end. Callejon had made the run inside the fullback. Pass went outside and was far too heavy anyway. Really is all about the 
Direct fight for second place in Serie A. Bastos did well. Mattia couldn't get back quickly enough. Jovinho. They do have the pace, you just feel, Roma, to trouble the Napoli rear guard. Jovinho. Playing just off the shoulder of Raul Albiol. Back with Pepe Reina. 0 0. Five minutes gone in Naples. Here's the ball. He's way offside. Bastos took too long to play the pass. That's why Jovinho was upset. Away goes Dries Mertens. Over the head of Hamzik. Away by Romagnoli for Roma. Well, I think Hamzik would have been offside. Maicon didn't need to come that close to Nyngeland. Nyngeland was going to head the ball back to him. Maicon made a bad decision. And the wayward, Lerim Chibaili. It's certainly been a lively start to the game. Was he offside? It was a tight one. Just over the head of Hamsik. And the instructions coming from Rudy Garcia. It's going to be a fascinating tactical battle, this. Not to be replaced after 39 minutes. Going for his country against France. Kevin Strootman. Oh, there's a player that loves to get forward, get crosses in. Not so good defensively. PSV player joined Roma in a deal worth around 16 million pounds. Florenzi getting the nod from Rudy Garcia tonight. Strokeman just falling awkwardly there. I no wonder he's just twisted something. It's part of the injury that he's already got. You see that knee heavily strapped up. Looks as though. Rudy Garcia is ready to make a substitution, or certainly thinking about it. One or two eyebrows were raised when the team sheets were handed out earlier. And the name of Mattia Destro didn't appear in the initial 11 for Roma. Change of emphasis by the Gianno Rossi. By Com's pass. Here's Leandro Casta, Brazilian defender in his third season with Roma. For it was Bastos. He didn't, want the ball freely, play. he didn't want the ball played to him. He actually said, no, don't play it to me. Just trying to ease himself back into the game. He's an important figure in that central midfield. He allows Pjanic to roam where he thinks he can be most effective. Here's Romagnoli. Products of the Roma Academy. Just one goal conceded by Roma in Serie A since the 3 0 thumping they suffered at the hands of the leaders Juventus in January. Breaks down again here. Michel Bastos. had made the darting run forward, Jamaili at the more conservative pass. Federico Fernandez. Played 90 minutes for Argentina against Romania on Wednesday. A nil-nil draw. Took part in 11 of Argentina's World Cup qualifiers. Marek Hamzik. Not really troubling De Sanctis. Hamzik's former teammate. He does well here, turns away from Strootman and Nyngalan, just gets underneath it, but that's what he can do so well, finding those little pockets of space in behind the midfield players of the opposition. He's been remarkably consistent as a goal scorer over the years for Napoli. Marek Hamzik, from City of the Ball. Strootman struggling here, doesn't look good. Kevin Strootman, he's got a big problem.
Well, he's collapsed in a heap with a 24-year-old. Began his career at Sparta Rotterdam before spells with Utrecht and PSV. It's very strange, isn't it? It's almost as if there's no one around him. Just as he lifted his leg, fell down in real agony. I think it was fairly obvious that he wasn't going to be able to carry on from the previous time he went down. Kevin Strootman, who scored in the first leg of the recent cup semi-final against Napoli, sent off in the second match. Sarcastically applauded. Matt Wilmer are going to have to switch things around, Stuart. And they've got today experienced campaigner at the ready. Well, if today comes on, certainly not a central midfield player. What a great fan of today. Played it right back recently against Bologna. Where's he going to come into the side here? Today, carrying with him the instructions from Rudy Garcia, turned 34 on Thursday today, the Brazilian. So well, his ninth season with Roma. He's going to play as the deepest midfield player. Might have to do a marking job on Hamshik. Golan is trying to get as close as possible to Marek Kamzic. It's going to be a Roma ball here. Tenacious competitor, Nain Golan. Always expect him to be an active participant. That's an eye for goal as well. It's away by Raul Albiol. Inla. Fauzi Goulam is the left back. The Algerian international, although French born. all the noises that you're hearing in the background this game yet to properly fire I think both sides actually want to play on the counter-attack Roma aren't going to send too many people forward they're all in forward from the full-back areas Mykon does like to get forward but there's plenty of protection for him when he does go into attacking areas oh, there's an easy giveaway from Florenzi Benitez conceding that the Scudetto has gone it's not going to be Napoli's but already building for next season Napoli desperately want second place guaranteed Champions League football you know, they need to win tonight away by De Sanctis Jovinho Nine Golan. It will be a Roma throw. The ball coming off Christian Maggio last of all. I'll be all. Zero a zero. Nil nil. Fifteen minutes gone. Approach favoured by Napoli. Too much on the pass for Maggio. That's the run he likes to make, Maggio. Is that well? It's not a good fist from the Sanctis. He actually gets his palm on it and just spoons it away. Just misjudged that slightly, the goalkeeper. And Napoli tried to build again. Hamzik in the thick of things. Ulam, no foul. Martins trying to impose himself on the game. Pjanic scored both goals in the earlier meeting of these two in Serie A. The 2 0 victory for Roma at the Olimpico. It's back in October. Stamped away by Fernandez. 
And that was an opportunity. A poor pass at the end of it. Napoli were trying to hold a high line. In the end, Albio got across there. Had a better pass. And Florenzi would have been in. Dulam, former Saint Etienne player. Started and completed Algeria's victory over Slovenia on Wednesday night. Higuain just trying to put a wind up. Castan forward by De Sanctis. It was made by Gukan Inla. Maggio. Now Raul Albiol, former Real Madrid player. Of course, Lazare had. Very much dropped down the pecking order there. It's all been a little bit watchful so far. Everybody trying to string a few passes together. Mertens, no free kick. It was Benatia who intervened. Bastos popping up on the right-hand side, Jovinho and Nainggolan in the middle. There's Jovinho, the spin and the turn, but wide of the mark. Well, there's the danger on the counter-attack. One minute, Napoli were trying to play the ball through to their front players. It was intercepted and Roma attacking really quickly. No free kick given against Mertens as he comes in field. Combination of Benatia and today. Two men, Jovinho and Nainggolan, who were in opposition to each other in Brussels on Wednesday. 2-2 draw between Belgium and Ivory Coast. Jovinho started his career in Belgium with Bavide. Slack by Napoli, Pjanic, Jovinho, Pjanic again. Certainly is capable of being the conductor of the Roma Orchestra no free kick forthcoming Florenzi for Roma today you have just come in today didn't start this match a replacement for the stricken Strootman he's actually done quite well since he's been on a couple of decent passes he's broken up one of Napoli's moves with an interception Higuain, and Hamzik couldn't quite locate the ball, just reached out in an attempt to trap it. Bastos, and now Maicon. Bastos, and he had Goulam for company. A couple of good tackles from Goulam. Talked about their full-backs. I do like to get forward Goulam, particularly Maggio. That will leave space for the likes of... Jovinho and Bastos in particular with their pace to run in behind but defended well there by Goulam. Nine Golan, former Cagliari player, weighted pass into the stride of Jovinho. Nearly. Oh, nearly excellent play from Nine Golan. The little one two. Got the ball back and he's just trying to play in behind the centre half with the pace of Jovinho put enough weight on it. Jovinho, Maicon, now Raja Nainggolan, trying to create a bit of space for himself. Roman Yoli was up from left back, Nainggolan. And the idea was to play it to Michel Bastos. And see what Roma are trying to do. As soon as the ball changes hands, they want to break quickly. Only sporadic Napoli threats up to this point. Even if Roma can't catch Juventus, certainly want second place for themselves. Six points ahead of Napoli, remember, Roma, and with a game in hand, Jovinho, and it's Tate. 
today. He could have actually taken that himself. It all opened up. Shavinia hit the ball a little bit too firmly at him, but today made a good run. Two Sindhars were a long way apart. Had he taken his touch into the space, he'd have been getting a shot away. Mike on. The reading of the situation. Gonzalo Higuain, 13 goals in Serie A this season. 77 minutes for Argentina on Wednesday. So one here for Pjanic. Takes a whack from Hamshik. Mike on. That's happened several times. Higuain's gone to block off the pass to the first centre half and they just switch it out to the second one. Castan. Langolan trying to work something. Sliding in was Fernandez. Gulam and Nine Golan on the volley. Raja Nine Golan trying to test Pepe Reina. Now action spills over to the other end. It's Iguain. Nobody else there though for Napoli. Hamšík didn't have the legs. Still nil nil. Well, one ball beating everybody there. He's got to do a little bit better there. Iguain tries to volley that forwards. There's the shot from Nyngolan. No, he did strike that well. As you said, we've seen him on a couple of occasions playing for Cagliari. He's been excellent. And Fernandez trots away from the scene of the crime. And ten on Jovino. Who is that strike? Unfortunately for him, it's straight at Pepe Reina. lost one player they certainly won't want to lose another one and for Benitez always has the notepad handy no scoring here Federico Fernandez. Interesting idea. He tried to spring Gulam on the Roma defence. Now there has been a goal in the League Art match. We'll be bringing you up to date with that very shortly. There's a man who knows a thing or two about Liga. Rudy Garcia. It's Bordeaux against Lyon. That's on the other channel. And Henry Save with the goal in the seventh minute. They kicked off slightly later than we did. 1 0 to Bordeaux against Olympic Lyonnais. And a free kick here to Roma. Maggio trying to get tight as that ball was switched out to Romagnoli. Didn't seem too much of him getting forward so far. Romagnoli. Lorenzi tasked with shaking it. Useful delivery too. And Roma striking, but hang on, it won't catch. Venatia with the header. Offside the decision. What a great delivery it was, and we know Bonatti is dangerous in the air. See him standing in an offside position. Second good decision we've seen from the assistant referee. And this time the decision goes against Napoli. You can see what they all think about that. Guain in particular. Bonatti up. Who had found the net just seconds beforehand, only to see the goal chalked off. Now, what's the referee going to do here? Well, I think the referee is admitting he made a mistake there. I think they gave offside from a throw in. I think yep. that's what everybody was indicating. And of course, you can't be offside from a throw in. 
The referee realised he'd made a mistake, he saw the assistant. Throw in, taken by Goulam. There's no touch, is there at all? From Bonatia. And there he sees the linesman's put his flag up. Certainly no contact. Well, Higuain. Whatever way you slice it, it's a curious one. Well, the way the referee was admitting that he'd made a mistake, that he's just going to give the ball back to Napoli. So this is where. Wayne looks across at the assistant referee. And the substitute today is being patched up. Well, whenever I watch Higuain, I heard Julien saying what a wonderful player he is. Yes, he is a, a wonderful player. I'm not sure he's quite world class because he lacks that little bit of pace at times. I saw a couple of clips in the pre-match show where he held off challenges but I don't think he's blessed with real genuine pace yeah, there's the ball just being kicked back but not where Napoli really wants it <laughs> header by Romagnoli Maggio uh, got his head to it. And if he didn't fix and starts this first half and the whistle goes again. Well, we certainly haven't seen enough of that man there, Kai Hon or Mertens. Both excellent runners with the ball, creative players. Taken by Nangolan. Going to get back from Romagnoli. Luca Benitez could go on from just a couple of yards away. As Napoli win the throw. Shamaili into reverse gear. Back to Pepe Reina. And that howler last week against Livorno. Shot from Ibrahima Mbe. Squirming underneath his body. Not one of his proudest moments. Romagnoli. No, that's not the sort of pass to help the Roma cause it was today. And now the free kick. And Napoli wants a bit more than that as it bounced off. Nine Golan. Well, Romagnoli plays the ball into midfield with today. Gave it away cheaply as he can do because I don't think he's a player that's got great awareness around him. Certainly handball there. Here's the offside goal. Good decision, the assistant referee. Good finish, wasn't it? Little flick on. That's exactly what he's trying to do there, Benatia. And De Sanctis, just making sure all the angles have been taken care of. The positioning of that Roma wall. Now, who fancies this? Chris Mertens was the answer against that human barrier. A couple of quick programming notes coming up on Saturday from midday, live on BT Sport 1 in the Barclays Premier League. Hull City against Manchester City. One of those two sides made it through to the last four of the FA Cup today, the other one didn't. Saturday the 22nd of March, BT Sport 1, it's a big one, Chelsea against Arsenal in the Barclays Premier League. And a reminder that you can watch all the programmes through the BT Sport app or btsport.com. Shemali's had an indifferent first 30 minutes here. Giving the ball away cheaply, made poor decisions. 
a very competitive midfield with Jamali and Inla playing for Napoli. Nainggolan, uh, Tedai in the midfield area. Pjanic is the playmaker amongst those five. And Hamšík is playing almost as the second centre four behind Higuain for Napoli. Michel Bastos, his first start for Roma. Albiol is getting pulled out of position. Managed to recover. Little tap by Mertens. There's Nainggolan. Over so much ground. Arancho Nainggolan. Gervinho. And a play by Fernandes. Roma just one goal short of the half century mark in Serie A this season. Mykon popping up at the centre. Free kick. Or is it? That yellow card flashed by the referee Gianluca Rocchi shown to Mykon for simulation. Well, I think he knew he'd overrun the ball. There was nowhere for him to go here. Certainly no challenge, of And he just sticks out his leg, but doesn't actually catch Mykon. And he holds his hands up. He actually pulls his foot away, doesn't he? Centre-half, Fernandez. Marek Hamšík. Finding Iguain offside though. Stop the cut. Fire on netting. Very dangerous game to play from Castat. Watch here when he steps up right at the last minute. Oh, it's a tight one, but he is offside. He's got to get that absolute. You're relying on a very good assistant referee. So the yellow card. Shown to Callejon. I think that's a bit harsh, don't you? Finishes off the cross. All the Roma players throw their arms up in the air. And the referee books him. Presumably for time wasting, I suppose. Not playing to the whistle. Poulain has tried to contort his body. Prevailed twice in the last five visits to Naples. Defense is on top here. Roma have had the ball in the back of the net. Another by Benatia. It was chopped off outside the verdict. Napoli have had the ball in the net as well, but that was a good deal earlier in terms of the decision by the officials. The Roma defenders had all stopped. Hunted away by Romagnoli. I haven't been able to get Chavino in behind these two centre halves, Fernandez and Albiol. Napoli have a cup final to look forward to. It's Fiorentina, either the 3rd or 7th of May. Quite been finalised just yet. Maggio. Now to gather is De Sanctis. Will depend upon the progress or lack thereof by Napoli and Fiorentina in the Europa League. Napoli have got an important date coming up with Porto. Albiol. Jamaili has that role of protecting the defence in this Napoli setup. Icon, Mr. Ground. Free kick to Roma. 
Certainly a player that Napoli feel as though they can close down. Mertens just sticks out a leg. He's getting good support from Inla. It's a tigerish tackler. Had that wonderful partnership with Gargano for a while. And Mazzari was the manager here at Napoli. They're outstanding in midfield. Jamaili towards Callejon. Magioli was controlling that area of the pitch. Florenzi dropping back as well. Higuain. A couple of little lapses there from Napoli in midfield. Nine Golan. Quite the pass he was looking for as he tried to dovetail with Pjanic. Today has it now. I don't think he was expecting that. Janic and Jovinho steadies himself. Jovinho for Roma, denied by Reina. And somehow Napoli keep it out. It's a let off for the home side. It's a let off, a good save. What a pass it was in behind the defender for Jovinho to get. It looks as though he'd done everything right. Showed good composure, cut back onto his right foot. But just gave Reina time to get out there and get the block in. Really good save from the Napoli goalkeeper. It's fair to say Roma have carried the greater threat of these two. And the home fans are getting a bit frustrated with the way that Napoli are giving the ball away cheaply. There's no real threat from Higuain. Certainly can't challenge the two centre-halves with pace in behind. Tate. Fernandez did his job. Now, Mertens away here. What an important tackle that was, Benatia, for Roma. He knew he had to get there. Well, you're absolutely right. If he gets this wrong, they're down to ten men. Roma. Mertens didn't quite have the pace. Not only is he good in the air, he's quick as well. Bernatia, no question. Here's the chance in behind Fernandez. But look how quickly Reina gets out to him. Yes, of course, he could have struck it first time with his left foot. But once he showed that composure to come back in on his right, the defender slid past him. Great save. 20th Serie A appearance for Pepe Reina on loan from Liverpool. Very much enjoying life here in southern Italy. Nine Golan. Uh, it's been purposeful from Roma. They've given the Napoli defenders plenty to think about. It's down for Roma, back to the Sectis. Today. Pjanic, and now Maikon. Nine Golan, possibilities here for Roma. Jovinho, cut again. And he works it with Florenzi. No end product once again, though. Wrong decision from Florenzi. If he just lets the ball come across him, watch when he tries to play the one-two, Jovinho. He just opens up his body, Florenzi. He could then get his right foot shot away. It's more open now. Inside the final five minutes of the first half. Napoli nil, Roma nil. And this is the derby of the sun, as it's known. Supporters of these two clubs used to be pretty good friends. Used to be on good terms with each other once upon a time. The goal came to an end in the late 80s, 1987. Salvatore Bagni, the then captain of Napoli, gave the Roma supporters the so called umbrella salute. Never a polite thing to do. Sete for Bastos. Of 
today has made himself available again. It's going to be a throw to Roma. Con to take it. Benassia. He improved as a player at Udinese before making the big money move to Roma last summer. Seems to be on the wanted list of so many clubs around Europe. Trevino oh, getting the break of the ball. Having to do it on his own, he's holding it up, and it was hit with authority. It came back towards Michel Bastos, and he wanted to put Reyna to work. Once again, Javino looks like he's going to get in behind, just set up the play here. What a strike it was from Bastos, just cutting across the ball, and a decent save from Reyna as well. Looked to be the wrong option for Bastos, he had a couple of players in the box. Roma corner, which Florenzi is responsible for. Another one by Higuain. Deft touch. It's gone Roma's way. Well, I think Roma have looked the more dangerous side. Here is the possession. Certainly, Roma have had more of the ball. Napoli looked threatened when Hamshik gets on the ball as the second centre forward, but he hasn't had enough of it. And I've been really disappointed in Merton and Kayahon. Players that you expect to create and run with the ball, be exciting. Roma haven't allowed them to play. Today, it's a difficult one for Florenzi. Roma, incidentally, Statistically speaking, the best passing side in Serie A. They've been able to neutralise Napoli. Sure they learned a lot from the crushing defeat they suffered in the Coppa Italia here recently. And Mangolan. Now to Napoli mean business, Mertens for Higuain, it's Callejon. Mertens over there, Hamzik has taken up his position in the middle, oh, Mertens testing De Sanctis. Well, it's better from the Napoli point of view. Well, most of the chances have come from one side or the other, giving the ball away and then the counter-attack. This is right at the end of it, a spectacular save, it has to be said, from De Sanctis. A much easier save than he made it look. Oh, straight at him, he's trying to bend it into the far corner. He really should keep hold of it. Going inside Mikon. Mikon doesn't move his feet quite as well as he once did. That's the threat. Nyingelen gave the ball away and suddenly Mertens was running in behind Mikon. Inching towards half-time. Here up for San Paolo. Blank score sheet. Callejon. Too much on it for Maggio. Rudy Garcia ought to be the happier of the two coaches based on the pattern of play in this first half, Stuart. Absolutely. They've controlled possession at times, they created the more, or the better chances. They look as though they can be a threat when they get Jovino running in behind. And the likes of Pjanic get on the ball, Bastos has done okay. Florenzi's been the one disappointment in those forward areas. Bastos is able to win it for Roma, Jovino. Pjanic arriving on the scene. Followed by Fernandez. To the heart of the Roma defence. Benatia was waiting. Callejon. Inler had to be quick. And 
out of time at the end of this first half. Offside flag has gone up against Iguay. He's just trying to spin off the back of the fullback. Romagnoli, very tight decision, probably just about the right one. He looked happy with himself, has he? And everybody else, Higuain. Uh, Bastos requiring a replacement shirt. Well, that's one of your one damaged. Like one of your shirts <laughs> on a night out. <laughs> this first half, Emig away. Napoli nil, Roma nil. Roma have looked the likely aside. Lorenzi, and it's wayward. Poor. Well, he did the hard part, pulled himself a bit of space. Here's where Pastos gets his shirt ripped. And had the stoppages earlier, you remember, for Kevin Stroopman, his injury. Towards three minutes, almost there. Well, this derby of the sun, Napoli against Roma, hasn't been a thing of radiant beauty up to this point. Napoli. Coming more and more into it as the first half progressed, but Roma, the more compelling side. Matti Benatia having a goal chalked off, his header into the back of the net. Rafa Benitez will shortly be able to address his troops and give them his analysis. We'll have analysis from James and the team on BT Sport in a moment. by Bet365. I told you so I never lied Love's a train I'll never ride Or oh, tell you babe I'm not the loving kind Now it's time for the action to speak louder than their words. The Oak Furniture Land March Sale is now on, with the largest selection of solid hardwood furniture in the UK at surprisingly low prices. This solid oak dining set with six real leather chairs is now only $7.99. And this original rustic solid oak large sideboard is just $4.45. And this solid oak widescreen TV cabinet is only $2.99. Plus, there's free delivery on everything. Oak Furniture Land. Quality at a price you can't knock. Proceed to protocol. With over 9,000 restaurants, Hungry House is the easy way to order your favourite takeaway. Your hunger? Our mission. Hungryhouse.co.uk. Order online or download the app. We got a tweet from the legend... When your van is a joke And it's gone up in smoke That's a drama There's no need to make do You can drive something new Vanorama 
They've got choice, such a lot of choice. You'll find just what you're after. So call it click today, call it click today. And try out Vanarama. With deals like this new VW Transporter for £189 a month, everyone's singing our praises. Vanarama. There's nothing nicer than waking from a great night's sleep. From the warm burrow of a luxury king-size hypnos bed, every inch of you floating on over a thousand pocket springs, snuggled under a toasty duvet. And crisp white sheets. Your head buried deep in a soft, plump pillow. Or choose a firmer one, if you prefer. What could be nicer than that? You can always rely on a Premier Inn for a great night's sleep, wherever you are. City, Saturday, midday, live on BT Sport One. The quarterfinals of the UEFA Europa League are up for grabs. Unbelievable, brilliant, beautifully done. First leg of the round of 16, Thursday, live on BT Sport and ESPN. Sponsored by Bet365. Tune in to Sports Hub at 7 o'clock tomorrow evening for all the latest news on what's been a pretty busy weekend in the FA Cup, Premier League, right across Europe, all that kind of thing. Now, speaking of European action, it's currently 1 0 over at the Stade de Chaban del Mas. Julian, take us through the first half highlights. Yeah, well, there's so many highlights we could have picked, and we're going to show the goal first. Let's there was a goal, and like in Italy, yeah. there was a goal, and very early on, great cross from Mariano, very good header finish from Henri Seve there. In Bordeaux, we said how, how important this game was for Lyon. Their, their best chance, there are many chances, but the best one is this one from Lacazette. It's a good run through the heart of the Bordeaux defence. Should have done better on his left foot there. Um, mm -hmm. So it's 1 0 up for Bordeaux at half time. Yeah, it's just half time now. And, uh, but very important for, for Lyon. Right, I bet the half time is more exciting in France as well, isn't it? Everything is everything. Is everything they is have people on unicycles riding around trampolines. And yeah, stuff like that, we've got cheerleaders, sort of. We've right. got everything. Ironic though that the goalkeeper, uh, the goal scorer's name should be Save It when you know the goalkeeper didn't. Anyway, I'll move on to a couple of tweets. Adam Walker, the top scorer at Roma in the league, has six goals. Do they need an out-and-out -out striker, James? Well, they also have several players on five goals. Yeah, I mean, they're, it's they're, collective. they're sharing the goals around. Right. And the top scorer is Destero with six in 11 games. He's only been back since the winter, so yeah, he could be that prolific striker for them. Well, we'll see if he makes an entrance. Marat Hamzic, the man who launched the Cresta Crave, that kind of uh, Mohican affair going on there. Julian, what have you made of his first half performance? Not impressed at all. We were saying you know, before the game started with James and Rafa that he's been disappointing this season. Uh, and especially tonight, when, especially after Strutman came off injured, he, sh he should be bullying today. He should be playing behind the lines. He should be, you know, everywhere on that pitch. And if Napoli has been, you know, disappointing in a way in that first half, it's because we, we haven't seen him much. He hasn't scored since the end of November. I know he's been injured in the meantime. But, you know, a lot of people talking about Napoli's changing tactics. Mm. You know, they have three people between the lines this season, whereas they used to just have one last season. So he had a lot more space to work in. Uh, so, you know, when he's got Dries uh, Mertens on one side and Callahan on the other, he's, he's perhaps a little bit more limited in what he can do, the, move, uh, the space he can move in. So, yeah, I think that's one of the reasons why he's, he hasn't perhaps been as uh, ebullient as he has in, uh, in previous seasons. All right, well, the two sides currently still level on a, uh, on a goalless, of course, so after 45 minutes at the San Paolo. Let's rejoin our commentators for the second half, Stuart Robinson and Derek Ray. Many thanks, James. Two of the top three attacks in Serie A, but drawing a blank so far. Morgan De Sanctis back in Naples. Fond memories of his performances here, but now a Roma player. Pepe Reina with that one very important stop to deny Jovino in the first half. The traffic flow was towards Reina. And Napoli 
will hope for a different story in the second half. They weren't at their best, Stuart. Napoli certainly weren't at their best, and the player that they were talking about in the break, Hemsik, didn't affect the game at all. And one or two good moments early on, trying to find space in behind the midfield of Roma. And it's Tadai who's going to be up against him. I don't think he's a wonderful defensive player, so it's chance for Hamshik to get the ball, run at him, play little one-twos, but I've been even more disappointed with the performance of Higuain, who to me doesn't look fit enough. Hasn't really been able to get wired in at all, Gonzalo Higuain. Napoli, and their traditional light blue and white, attacking the goal to our left in the second half. derived from the blue waters of the Gulf of Naples. Forward by Castan. That one for Gervinho to chase. You should have to ask the question about Mattia Destro. You heard the lads in the studio discussing him. A possible role he might play in this match. Six goals in 11 Serie A games. We shall see. Well, when Roma are at their best, Totti's playing as the centre forward, but what he does, he comes off short and allows other players to run beyond him, Trevino in particular. Then Destro plays up the front, certainly doesn't do any defensive work, he doesn't come short and set up the play. And that's here, they just got away with that and no more, Roma. Trevino, delighted to have been reunited with Rudy Garcia at Roma this season, as they were together at Lille. Inla. 62 minutes for Inla in Switzerland's 2-2 draw with Croatia on Wednesday in St. Gallen. Now Mertens trying his luck. Ambitious from there. Well, Romagnoli lost control of the ball. He went in for one tackle, then tried to slide in on Mertens as well. Trying to bend that ball over the top of De Sanctis, who was off his line slightly. Gokan Inla. It works out for him. Gulam. And Hamzik right beside the touchline. Hasn't really been able to bring his influence to bear. It's all just a bit scruffy. Really seen Pjanic dominate the game as we did a few weeks ago. A couple of the games, absolutely outstanding, quick feet. Saw a pass, was able to shield the ball when people challenged him. One free kicks for the team. He's happy to receive the ball in all sorts of areas. Emma was doing the hassling. Pjanic looking for a bit of protection. And the referee was with Pjanic and against Inla. Castan. Forward by nine Golan. Covering up there is Rodrigo Tade. Came on for the injured Kevin Strokeman in the first half today. Jovino up to this near side to Michel Bastos. Started the game on the left. And operating on the right flank. Lorenzi made that darting run. Romagnoli, nine Golan. Roma have bossed this game in the possession department. And managed to win it again. Jovino is trying to find Pjanic. Say, the quality of this, the passing in the second half has been particularly poor. Ooh, changing hands all the time. There again, it's changing hands and again. Bastos giving it to Pjanic. Still Miralem Pjanic. Just running into Jamaili. Gulam. Mertens. Not to be for Dries Mertens. 
referee had a decent view of that, Raul Albiol. The player caught as he moves away from Tade. Just mistimes it completely, Tade. It's a poor challenge from the Brazilian midfield player. First goal will be awfully important tonight, you just feel. Napoli have taken the lead 18 times in Serie A. And trying to take the lead in this game through Mertens. From a long way out, Dries Mertens. Yeah, good play from Mertens, not only the shot, but the way he found space. Just came in off the touchline. It's a nice pass to him. Bastos was a little bit wider. He was trying to block the ball out to the wide player. Better from Napoli. It's 18 times Napoli have struck first. 14 wins, four draws, no defeats from that position. Roma have hit the first goal on 19 occasions. 16 wins, three draws, no defeats. So you get the point I was trying to make. Today. With Albiol. It's quite like, rightly a Roma ball. Albiol playing it out. I think he was claiming a foul. Said I went with his studs up. Casta. Here's Benatia. Only rated Moroccan international. Jovino. Wasn't able to get there. Tade. Looking for Jovinho once more. Challenge came in from Fernandez. Bastos just runs out of space. Good tackle from Fernandez, racing across. Really good block using the outside of his right boot. Textbook slide tackle there. My corner. Nine Golan. Where goes Pjanic? The tackle coming in from Jemaili. He's been pretty well shackled in this game, Pjanic. Well, that's what Jemaili and Inler are good at doing, closing people down. They're not creative players particularly. They're hard-working players. They do the defensive side of the game well. There again, Jemaili closing down. He's won it back here. Marim Jemaili getting the better of Miralem Pjanic, and it's on here, Callejon! Excellent piece of goalkeeping by De Sanctis against his former club. Well, they wondered, the Napoli supporters, was that the moment? Here's Mertens, and Iguain! Well, he gives it a blast. Couldn't quite keep the shot down, but a couple of scares for Roma in the last few seconds. Well, he hits the crossbar, I think he just clips the crossbar here. Brilliant play from Mertens. And a good strike. This is where Pjanic gets caught by Jemaili. It's a good effort, just can't get his body away and get his foot over the top. He's running too straight there, Kajahon. And now it's the just to stand still and wait for him to get the shot away. He can't disguise his shot because the ball's in between his feet there, Kajon, well played Jemaili, winning the ball back, not allowing Pjanic to take time on the ball. Ooh. Evidence that Napoli are ratcheting things up. Most of the chances that have been created throughout the game have come when the ball's changed hands and it's been a counter-attack. Here's Jovinho, just popping it back to Pjanic. Mike Horn. Moves from the Napoli supporters. He's rather knocking around again. On the way back to Benatia. Nearly ten minutes into the second half. Napoli beginning to show us their more explosive side. Today. Oh, 
There's a risk about that. I'll tell you what. Well, the flag has gone up. Well, Ramagnoli did really well there. So easy to foul. There's the last little bit, but Forenzi was already offside. Took a big gamble. Day on. He's flicking the ball up, ready to do an overhead kick. Ramagnoli just watched the ball. Pitched it off him. Fernandez from the back into the stride of Inla. Manik Kamzik was the player Inla wanted to pick out. Well, there you see again Inla in and around the box. He's not bad at playing little one twos and getting shots away. He doesn't always pick out the right pass. And a much better start to this second half. Icon puts it forward. Nangolan full of energy. He's that sort of player. Box to box. Winning the 50 50, driving forward. Good acquisition from Cagliari. Gervinia. Gladly done, Pjanic, trying to poke it through for Jovinho. Pjanic has it once more. And will accept the corner. And to start off, it was well defended by Fernandes again. Seems to be able to read danger. He gets to root for a defender. It's a little bit quicker than people give him credit for, those long legs getting across the ground. He's certainly made two or three really good challenges against Jovinho. Yoli poised to make the late run. Bastos was in position. Bonatia vying for it. Here's Higuain. Snapoli trying to turn defence into attack. This came off Dries Mertens. Not too much ferocity by Higuain. Rudy Garcia and Rafa Benitez. Two tacticians. Certainly Rudy Garcia saw his plan work better in the first half than that of the Napoli boss. Napoli biting back at the beginning of the second half. I think there's a bit of fear about Napoli's play in that first half. The left of Benitez is off. Janic for Bastos. Drawing it back. And the shot coming in from Florenzi. Now Romagnoli, for the Giallo Rossi, here's Nainggolan. Switch of play to Mike Conn. Bastos, Nainggolan in position. He's never going to be afraid of shooting from that sort of range, Raja Nainggolan. And he took a slight deflection, goes that in, that just sticks his leg out. There's that opportunity again, he's on the side, you see the far side, Maggio, slightly behind the other players. I don't think he picks anybody out, it's lucky that it gets to Florenzi, but once again it's Fernandez that gets the block in. Bastos with the corner, and Torreira's there, second time of asking. Ebola gets out, now, it's very nearly... There for Jemaili. Not Napoli, have themselves a bit exposed. Bastos to Jovinho. Back with Mike Horn. And Reyna was able to shuffle around and concede the corner. Well, it takes a massive deflection of Inla here. He's going one way, and it's a really good save. It's a hopeful shot from Mike, and it's probably going. Well wide of the far post, but a good reaction from Pepe Reina. Good deal more action-packed this game now. Bastos looking for the little flick on from Romagnoli. There's nine Golan. Bastos. Swimming 
into Gulam. Now Mertens has a spring in his step. Shamayli met by Benatia. Play on, says referee Gianluca Rocchi. We've seen the best and the worst of Jamali. There was an opportunity to counter-attack. We allowed Benatia to get back at him. A pace that we've already seen this evening from Benatia. <laughs> just coming off Gulam. Substitution time. Here in Naples, and that will be all for Blenin Gemayli. He's going to be replaced by Enrique, the 27-year-old Brazilian defender. He joined Napoli just a few weeks ago. He's on the books of Barcelona. Spent his four years there on loan at various clubs. Serie A appearance for Enrique. Well, he's going to play in midfield, Enrique. Michel Bastos snapping onto the ball. Most immediate activity for Enrique. Janic, he's not going to get away with that. Yeah, I think Jamali, apart from that one time when he pinched the ball off this man here, Jamali. Uh, Pjanic made that pass for Kajan. Really had a poor game. Crowd were beginning to get onto him. Valenti was the player who went down. Maggio trotted away. I don't think we, we see the best of Maggio as a conventional right back. I love watching him play when he was a wing back under Mazzari, breaking forward with every opportunity. It's between him and Licksteiner, who were the best wing backs in Syria, certainly right wing backs. If anything, it's a safer Napoli under Rafa Benitez. Different system, the Benitez system, four at the back. Two players protecting the four. Just when you have players like Cavani and Lavezzi, I suppose it's understandable that it might appear to be more dynamic. Lorenzo Insigne going through his paces as we speak. And then another player that he can bring on, Benitez. Mykon with the Roma throw, Bastos helping the ball on its way. Here's Mykon. Michel Bastos. His first start as a Roma player. Routine for Pepe Reina, quickly forward. Romagnoli. Enrique going to bring to this Napoli side. Defender plan as the holding midfield player here. So they had too much creativity to them. Look now in there. Trying to get it up the pitch. Higuain shielding it. Flicked by Mertens. Kaya Horn. The Saktis serves his team well again. Well, the two wide players combining there. As well to get any sort of shot in the return to him is not great. Just gets his volley in. Goes past Benatia. But that's what you want to see from the wide players. Gonna come in field at times to join in with the front player, join in with Hamshik, let the fullbacks get higher down the outside to get crosses in. Albiol for Napoli, an improved effort. And the Pantanope in the second half, but still nil nil. Higuain. Well, I think that's poor play from Higuain. Starts to come in field, he's never going to get his shot away. There was runners going beyond him. He's gave possession away far too easily. There's Bastos. Today has remained forward, has the ball now. Rodrigo Tadej. 
Nainggolan shuffling it off to Pjanic. Last off with Tade. Tade hitting the byline. His run was being matched by Raul Albiol, however. Maikon. And I think he knew what he was doing, Maikon. He's been penalised. The decision has gone in favour of Callejon. They want him sent off, don't they, Michael? No, Napoli tried to spring into attack. The is there to gather. 20 minutes into the second half. Still it's 0-0, zero 0-0. Zero. Nil -nil. Napoli against Roma, this high-profile Sunday night game on BT Sports. And the Michael has been booked for simulation. That's what Benitez was asking for. That's what one or two of the Napoli players were asking for. Another booking for the right back. Really, what you want to see from the manager? Now, my corner has been warned. Not going to try anything naughty. They've already been booked. They've perhaps got away with one. Callejon. Too strong for Iguain. Look at Castan, he's having a go at the assistant referee. I'm not sure he's right to have a go because he quite tried to step up right at the last minute. Iguain made a good run. You saw that once in the first half where he just about got it right. He's taking a big gamble. You step up right at the last minute. Here's Tate. Six points, the difference between the two sides at the start. Roma have a game in hand. That's because of the match against Parma a few weeks ago that was rained off in the 11th minute. He's scheduled for the 2nd of April. That's the norm here in Italy is to pick up where you left off, not start from scratch. So approximately 79 minutes of that match to be completed. Fernandez trying to angle it towards Hamšík. Well, he didn't influence the first half, particularly Hamšík. Certainly not influencing this second half. Struggling to get in the game. This sort of gone. Martins trying to race forward with the ball at his feet, but Pjanic going down he's been one of the more lenient referees we've seen in Syria he's fallen for every trick every time the players dive Mike on six years at Inter six fruitful years one at Manchester City Let's not forget that a draw would suit Roma much better than it would Napoli, given the respective positions, points totals of the two sides. Gervinia. Five goals in 22 Serie A matches this season for Gervinia, just one in his last eight. Romagnoli, Roma trying to frustrate Napoli. And it was by Gulam, did his job that time. Inler, a risky ball, Enrique tripped by Pjanic. Chavinia yeah, nearly pitched the ball there, would have been racing away. Trying to make a bit of progress. Robbie Fauzi Gulam to take this. Nine 
Golan. There's a certain authority about him. Rancho 9 Golan, the Belgian international. Jovino using Bastos, who's gone over to the left now. Nine Golan's in the middle. Jovino. A great hold up play by Jovino. And as the guy said in the studio at half time, his decision making in the final third sometimes isn't good enough. There he had a couple of options to cut it back. He does well to check here, threatens to cross with his left foot. Now it's a pass back into the edge of the box. Instead he goes for goal himself, no chance of really getting his shot away on target. Pjanic to take this, ball not inside the quadrant, now it is. Anito Di Liberatore, the assistant referee, doing the honours. And Martins with the pass. Got to get out my con. As far as Inlet. Martins. There's options all over the pitch. Enrique, one of them. Took a little reflection on its way through. Sure that Enrique wanted to find himself out in that wide area. One v one. And for Romagnoli, didn't try and beat him. Just tried to bend the ball round him. Huge fixture this, and the battle for a second place and guaranteed Champions League football next season. Today for Roma. Pjanic. That was lovely work. Milan Pjanic, who of course grew up in Luxembourg, represented Luxembourg at youth level. And committing to Bosnia Herzegovina. Jovinho. Callejon. Standing guard for Napoli. Hamzik. It was Tade who put up the tackle. Quick throw by Hamzik. Across comes Castan. Maggio with the clearance. Now we are going to see the introduction of Lorenzo Insigne. And Manic Hamzik is the player going off as he gives the armband to Christian Maggio. Hasn't really been able to have a positive effect on this game, Hamzik. When he's playing with confidence, he's a wonderful player. Can go past people, he can shoot with both feet, he can pick out passes, but today wasn't his day. And the guys in the studio indicate it hasn't really been his season since November. That substitution confirmed over the Tannoy system by Decibel Bellini. Long-serving PA announcer at the San Paolo. Quite the character. Maggio now with the armband. Insigne has come out to the left-hand side. It's time for Rudy Garcia to bring on his sub. And personnel changes coming thick and fast now. It's nine Golan. Today, all the while, my con waiting that right hand side. It's Chavinho with the pass, it's my con. Florenzi have moved into the center, and it's Florenzi slightly off balance, just wide. What a wonderful cross from my con coming in on his left foot, decided to bend it with the outside of his right into the space. Certainly not offside, the two centre-halves just stand there, allow people to run in behind them. Fernandez, for once, made the wrong decision, he can look a lot across at the assistant referee all he wants. They were onside. It will be Adam Lijajic, you saw him getting ready just a second ago. Coming on for Alessandro Florenzi. This is his last act. He couldn't quite get enough on it, difficult, the ball swerving so... Vicious lead from Michael. So Lijic on the pitch, the 
Serbian player who was due to join Manchester United a few years ago. That move never completed because of work permit issues. Enrique, high and hopeful off the boot of the substitute. Well, the crowd turned up here. Let's watch their Napoli team. I wanted to see them play at a high tempo. They were right behind them, but they've switched off a little bit. They've been frustrated with the way their team have played. Ironic cheers when Enrique had that shot there. I think we all came here tonight expecting goals after a demolition job by Napoli in the recent second leg of the Coppa Italia semi-final. Just five goals in the first leg of that tie. Roma winning 3-2. Rafa's men making it through over the two legs. You can either side increase the decibel level on the pitch in the last few minutes. Benatia coolly back to De Sanctis. Once again, good pace, good reading of the situation. And Benatia. Getting better and better at the centre half. Enrique is being buffeted. Free kick then to Napoli. There he is, the familiar figure of Aurelio De Laurentiis, Italian film producer and president of Napoli, has been since 2004. And do they have a piece of magic in them? Higuain and company all waiting, it's today with a clearance. Mertens striking that free kick, he has it again here, Dries Mertens. Dealt with by Benatia, strong header. 13 minutes left. Insigne the substitute, back to Goulam. Here's Inla. Insigne. Callejon knew that he couldn't really get himself involved from that position. Not quite sure who he was looking at there. Insigne. Good play from Inla. That's what he can do. Play little one twos in and around the box. Insigne had more time than he thought. by Goulam, Insigne for Enrique. Maggio, his raids have been pretty well restricted on that right-hand side. Well, it used to be a lot better when balls were transferred out to him from the opposite side of the field. Most of the passes that they've tried to play over the top for him come from the same side and here comes Pandev clever footballer that's a very inventive player Goran Pandev so the Macedonia international to come on the next stoppage in play well you'd imagine it be for one of either Mertens or Kajahon not the next stoppage in play as things have turned out. He has played at centre forward, Pandev, on occasions when Higuain hasn't been fit. That's a big call from Benitez if he took Higuain off. Federico Fernandez. Castan with a header for Roma. Here's Nine Golan. I have a feeling you're going to hear from Nine Golan at the World Cup with Belgium. Which it is, uh, Supremely gifted Belgian squad. Mangolan very happy to be part of it. Belgian of Indonesian parentage, Rancho Nangolan. Not doing his case any harm with his performance against Ivory Coast the other night. Only his fifth international appearance. 
Albiol, and now Inler. All the while, Goran Pandev waits. Insigne didn't play his way through. Bastos trying to find Lijic. Disappointing ball, Jovinho was going after it as well for Roma. Good start in position from Pepe Reina. Didn't have to race out, standing in a good position. Now will Albiol. Second best attack against the third best attack in Serie A. But nil nil. And we're inside the final ten minutes. Made up to San Paolo. Mertens. Janic was digging in. Here's Kulam. The oh, Super Bowl! Kaya Horn with the breakthrough for Napoli. It's happened again. Kaya Horn who scored in the recent Cup semi-final. And it's all gone blue in Naples. What a cross from Gulam, the left-back. You haven't seen too many crosses coming to the box. Got two big centre-halves in there, Castan and Vanatia, but he goes long. And Kajahon pulls off the back of Romagnoli, the young defender. Watch here, he comes short and then spins off the back of him. Romagnoli gets his body position wrong, and what a good header it is as well. The cross makes it, but it's great movement from Kayon, and nothing that the Sanctus can do about it. He started to come towards the ball, he then went round the back. Brilliant play from both the crosser and the header. Tenth league goal of the season for Jose Kayon. A headed goal tonight. Just as it was a headed goal in the second leg of the cup semi-final. And you never know in the battle for second place. Kajahan's just signaled to the bench that he's struggling a little bit. And he just scored. Now we will see. Well, Stuart, Mattia Destro is getting ready to come on for Roma. Pandev still hasn't made it on. Mertens. He wants to come off, Kaihon. I wondered if he was going to be the player substituted. Had the ball gone out a little bit earlier and Pandev would have come on. Here it is again. I don't see the movement there of Kaihon. He ends up heading it beyond the far post. He started off making a run towards the near post and then just backed away. Nine Golan driving on, back by Albiol to Reina, his fellow countryman. Seven minutes left. Roma, who remember, have lost just once all season in Serie A. And Gianluca Rocchi has been quite keen to keep the card in his pocket. And booking here for today. Well, he takes a big swipe today, loses possession here to Mertens. He takes a big kick at him, certainly nowhere near the ball. There it is. Right, right, he gets a yellow card. And he has a little stamp on him as well. Look at this for a header. Just pulling away, make sure he makes good contact with it. Nothing that the Sanctus can do about it. Well, he scored the goal, Callejon. But Rudy Garcia was especially happy about that. And the change for Roma. Romagnoli replaced by Mattia Destro, who's been in sparkling form. Six goals in 11 matches, Roma's top scorer. Of course, he had the knee problem, knee surgery to overcome the first part of the campaign. Off goes Callejon. And on comes Goran Pandev for Napoli. Well, I feel sure that Kajahon was the player coming off. Had the ball gone out of play a little bit earlier, they were waiting to get Pandev on. Napoli now trying to see this out. 
Let's just remind you that coming up on Saturday from midday on BT Sport 1 in the Barclays Premier League, it'll be Hull City against Manchester City. Great day for Hull City today, not such a great day for Manchester City. Saturday the 22nd of March, BT Sport 1, Chelsea against Arsenal. Cracking game for you to look forward to. And a reminder to go to the BT Sport app or btsport.com for all your programming options. Napoli 1, Roma 0, five minutes left. The flick by the Ajax, it was clever play. Maicon, wonderful defending by Raul Alviol. The Ajax has it again. Nine Golan. Roma with a better side in the first half. We've seen more of the ball than have Napoli in this game. But it's Napoli leading. It's Maicon. And a difficult one to bring under control. It's slipping away from Roma. It certainly is. Here's that tackle. A couple of good slide tackles we've seen from both centre halves now. I still think Roma have been probably the better side over the course of the game. We haven't seen too much from this man, Higuain. But out of nothing, they scored a really good goal, Napoli. And they haven't been caught on the counter attack so much in this second half. Roma having to go about their business without Francesco Totti, without. Daniele De Rossi, the two senior professionals. Now, do they have a second goal in them here? Napoli, it was Mertens on the run. Inler. Now, Pjanic with a touch on for Roma. Nine Golan, well aware that Jovino had peeled off to his left. Today. Three minutes of normal time remaining. Majic for Pjanic, it's nine Golan. Standing firm was Raul Albiol, this is Castan. Pjanic, and Vajic. Today, Destro was trying to get the touch on the ball. Following on from today's drive. A yeah, weak effort from today. Interesting to see whether Destro would have been given offside had he got a touch on that. Well, I'm not sure he got everything right, Benitez. It's been a great performance from Napoli. But they've defended well for most of the game. They haven't allowed Roma too many opportunities. They certainly haven't created too many themselves, Napoli. But one good cross into the box, a bit of good movement at the far post. And Roma, since that goal, haven't looked like getting back into it. My God. Benatia across the defence to Castan. There's the Ajic. Martin's getting back there to help out Maggio on the Napoli right. Pjanic has a good understanding with the IH and Destro. And that wouldn't have counted. The flag had gone up just as that move was developing. He's got to see that he's offside here, Destro. He's pointed once or twice. And this is going to be a happy president, Aurelio. Laurentis. Is it going to be a ninth home win of the season for Napoli? And a win for the Partenope would have a profound effect on the race for second place. Shouldn't forget, though, Stuart, that Roma have that game in hand. He gave the ball away there today. Bastos has gone to left back at the moment. And it does finish 1 0 to Napoli. It's grist to the mill of Juventus. Not that 
the old lady needs a boost. Peter Fiorentina earlier today. Fiorentina will be their Europa League opponents. The round of 16 as well. Maybe a minimum of three added minutes. Jovino is reaching out for it. Here's Mykon, gives it a lash. One or two Neapolitan hearts were in mouths. Well, I think Pepe Reina goes to his knees. Just getting a bit of swirl on it, swerves away from the near post at one point. That looks though like it's in. Pepe Reina was beaten. So it's not been Roma's evening. Once again, it shows without Totti, he cannot be quite so creative. Off ahead of today, Napoli will be in no great rush. of the free kick and they have gone down he was doing the appealing Lijic here's Pjanic covering up there Insigne I think the players get frustrated with Jovino at times because he can't bounce balls off him. He doesn't offer himself to balls played into his feet. He's always looking to run behind, but sometimes when there's pressure on the ball, players need to play little one-twos off him. Mike on. Jovino in the centre, in their away. Almost two minutes now into stoppage time. Roma, who remember, failed to score. Last time out against Inter. Haven't been able to breach the Napoli defence. Doesn't look as though they will either. Insigne. He was calm. Higuain. Insigne trying to run onto it. Belted away by De Sanctis. Napoli have to pay attention at the back. Job not quite done. Comes off Jovino. And there's experience for you from Pepe Reina. That ought to be that. Yes, Albio's got a slight problem. They want some treatment, they want to run down the clock. Two centre-halves have played well. Albiol and Fernandez. I think it's been a wonderful performance from Napoli. But in the main, they've stopped Roma being too creative. That's down to the two centre-halves. Inver's done a good job in that midfield area as well. Gulam, apart from getting the crossing, hasn't ventured too far forward. He stayed in a flat back four. We've rarely talked about Maggio getting forward because he's been just sitting in at right back. With a good back four performance from Napoli. And that's going to get them the win. Well, Napoli have come to enjoy these tussles with Roma. This particular season, last month in the Coppa Italia, Benitez and company emerged victorious over two legs at the semi-final stage. And now in Serie A on this Sunday, just when Napoli needed inspiration, into the hard currency of three points. It looks as though that is what they'll get. Almost four minutes now into added time. It's all over. A victory for Napoli of the hard-fought variety. They weren't at their best in the first half, but they came up trumps in the second. They headed goal from Jose Callejon, following a superb ball by Fauzi Gulam. This will hurt as far as Roma are concerned. Only their second league defeat of the season. It is finished in Naples. Napoli 1, Roma 0. Many thanks then to Derek and to Stuart. Indeed, the first goal that Roma conceded in City and over eight hours of football. Rudy Garcia maybe one or two regrets about the way he approached that game as Roma find that they are now not quite as secure in second place in City. Here comes the top of the table indeed.
Napoli with that victory moving to within three points of an automatic berth in the Champions League group stages. Roma, of course, though, with a game still in hand. Now, a quick look at what's coming up next Saturday and Sunday on BT Sport. We've got Bayern Munich. They're in absolutely incandescent form. Five goals against Schalke last weekend. Six this weekend against Wolfsburg. And they're facing another of the top four contenders, Bayer Leverkusen. Absolutely 